darkest night You can light it up You can light it up Oh God of revival Let hope arise Death has overcome You've already won Oh God of revival
Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faith and heal our cries. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. with 
Hey there, and welcome to Wesley Church Online, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm Brayden, and I would like to thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. Today, we have a special worship service just for you, because we have an amazing guest preacher, Reverend Leslie Houseworth Fields, the senior pastor at the Mark United Methodist Church in Montclair. And today, she is preaching on the title, Rise Up. During worship, I invite you to connect with our church family via the chat box to the right of your screen. There are three things that you can do there. One, it's never been easier to invite someone to worship now that we've been worshiping online. So please click the invite button and bring someone to church with you today or send them this link now, wesley.online.church. That's wesley.online.church. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and then share the video with someone that God is bringing to your thoughts you won't regret it. Two, if you're new here with us, we believe that you will learn of God's purpose for your life when you become a disciple of Christ. And that begins with knowing Christ and Christ Church. Make sure to fill out the I'm new here card and we would love to connect with you this week and guide you in how to grow deeper in your faith. Finally, throughout the service, be sure to share your joys and concerns. We'd love to pray for you today. Remember, God loves you and so do we. So come and join me in the call to worship and enter together into God's holy and healing presence. This time, we will all read aloud together. So let us hear the word of God as one body. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you reveal to us a power that has no parallel. May the eyes of our heart be opened to see this power and all it has done in our lives. Pour out your spirit of power upon us that we may proclaim your glory and we may be instruments of your grace and peace. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. We thank you, almighty God, for the life of Jesus among us and that he reigns in power for us. Raise us up, strengthen our hope, and bless the work of our hands that we may live as Christ's body in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
needed rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan but now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing and now your love is the end that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open because when you call my name shout it i ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you call my a few announcements this week. Once again, happy Valentine's Day. Today, our mission team is calling on our church family to send out at least three Valentine's cards to each other, especially those on our weekly prayers of petition. This will be a reminder to us that we all are deeply loved by God and each other. Thank you to all of our volunteers and generous children of God. This Wednesday the 17th is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. And for anyone who would like to receive ashes, Pastor James will be offering a drive-by ash disposition at the church parking lot that day between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. And then afterwards, we will be holding a special live Ash Wednesday service on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. We hope all of you can join us for the service so that we can begin the season of Lent together. And if you want more information on any of this, you can always contact the church office at office at wumcsp.org. Thank you. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 16 to 23. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you as a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of the heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Life can be messy and hard. There are things we struggle with, things we need to stop doing and let go of, but we just can't seem to. We create problems by the ways we act and react to the world around us. We get caught up in the crowd and our priorities get off track. Guilt takes over and we forget who we are. But there's hope. That is not where our story ends. God washes away our sin, raises us to new life, and calls us to so much more. Hey, Pastor James here. I'm so excited to introduce to you our guest preacher for today. She is the Reverend Leslie Houseworth Fields, and she is a graduate of South Carolina State University, uh, Clemson University, and Emory University's Candler School of Theology. She graduated with a concentration in scripture and uh, interpretation and a certificate in black church studies. Uh, she was also a recipient of the school's prestigious Woodruff Fellowship and was selected as a fund for the Theological Education Ministry Fellow. Uh, Reverend Houseworth Fields currently serves as a senior pastor of The Mark in Montclair. She enjoys traveling, reading, and spending time with her husband, Corey Fields, and their children, Chloe and Corey Jonathan. Uh, pastor Houseworth Fields is a great friend of mine, and she is a fantastic speaker. Every time she speaks, uh, God challenges me. Uh, God sets my heart on fire just a little bit more. So I'm so excited for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, please welcome with me now, Reverend Leslie Houseworth Fields. Thank you, Pastor James, for that wonderful introduction. I am so honored to be with you this week here at Wesley South Plainfield. I am excited to see the wonderful ministry that you're doing in your community and can't wait to see how God will continue to use you going forward. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For the next few moments that are ours to share, I want to preach from the subject, Rise Up. A few years ago, rapper Kanye West made national headlines for going on the TV show TMZ Live and suggesting that 400 years of slavery to him sounded like a choice. Now, Kanye has proven that he's no stranger to controversy, but this was arguably his most ridiculous rant. Like many of you, I was appalled that he would make such insensitive and verifiably false remarks. For history shows that from the earliest days of the slave trade, our African ancestors rose up and fought for their freedom. 
Men and women threw themselves overboard so that they would not have to endure the horrors of the Middle Passage. In the 17 and 1800s, many people demanded their freedom and escaped through the Underground Railroad so that they could have a better and freer and liberated life in the North. And beyond the horrors of slavery, many of our ancestors have chosen again and again to rise up. I imagine that scriptures like today's reading from Ephesians chapter 1 undergirded their, their resilience and their resistance. I imagine that they were strengthened by the immeasurable greatness of God's power. They found hope in the knowledge that Christ, the one who came to bring good news to the poor and to set the captive free, that same Christ set far above all cosmic and earthly rule and authority and power and domain. Dominion. I believe these words helped them believe that they could rise above the big house, rise above the whipping post, and rise above the auction block. And here on this second Sunday in February, we are reminded that Christ is still on high. The Bible says that he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. And after that, he was carried up to heaven, where later in Ephesians, the writer will say that we have been raised with Christ and we share in his heavenly status. In other words, because Jesus went higher, you can go higher too. Because Jesus rose up, you can rise above the pain in your life. Because Jesus rose up, you can rise above the trauma of your childhood, the mother who did not love you well or the father who did not claim you. You can rise above the injustice that the world sends your way. Now, I hear you asking or saying to yourself, yeah, preacher, you're saying that we can rise and the Bible says this, but how can I in my earthly body rise to heavenly heights? Well, family, the writer of Ephesians offers us guidance on how we can be raised with Christ, not just in the by and by, but how we can be raised with him right now. And the first thing that I want to highlight from this text is that if we are going to be raised with Christ, we must first be grounded in prayer. The writer of this passage says, I remember you in my prayers and give thanks to God. Now, here's the thing. I know that prayer is not a popular subject. A lot of times we don't pray until we find ourselves in a crisis. And that's not to make you feel bad or to beat up on you. But I want to encourage us to remember that prayer is how we fortify ourselves in this journey we call life. Let me put it to you this way. I'm addicted to my cell phone. I don't leave home without it. In fact, the other day I was on my way to the supermarket, got about five minutes down the road and turned my car and went back home because I don't want to be anywhere without my cell phone. I check it for the best and fastest route on Google. I check it for the weather. My cell phone is kind of like a blankie for one of the kids. And here's something I learned about cell phones. The bigger charger you have, the faster your cell phone charges. And prayer is kind of like the charger that we have for our cell phones. The bigger and more robust our prayer life, the stronger we are for the journey. Now, prayer doesn't mean that your life is going to be easy and that you aren't going to have trouble. Check, prayer does not always change our circumstances. Prayer has not made this pandemic go away as quickly as I would have liked, but prayer has kept me in this pandemic. See, prayer does not always change what's happening out there. Prayer changes what's happening on the inside of us. Your ex-husband or ex-wife might be difficult to get along with, but prayer will help you to be a better co-parent. Your, your boss on your job might still be a jerk, but prayer can keep you from cursing everybody out in a staff meeting. Prayer is the thing that carries us when all hell is literally breaking loose in our life. And we're not called to pray just for ourselves, but we're called to pray for our neighbors, pray for our enemies, and pray for the world. Prayer is a spiritual discipline. We must feed our spirits every day just as we feed our bodies with food. And I grew up down south where the saints used to say, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, 
no power. I'm reminded of the words of the Reverend A.C. Dixon, who said, when we rely on organizations, we get what organizations can do. When we rely on ourselves, we get what we can do. But when we rely on prayer, we get what God can do. And that's why we've got to pray without ceasing. Pray when we wake up in the morning. Pray in the quiet time of the afternoon. Pray before we go to bed at night long prayers, short prayers. Pray that God would surround you with the people that you need. Pray for your health. Pray about your wealth. Pray for your church and pray for your pastor. If you want to rise with Christ, then church, we must pray without ceasing. And not only must we be grounded in prayer, but we also must be guided by purpose. The author of Ephesians say, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened and you would know the hope, riches and inheritance among the saints. Now, the world teaches us that our purpose is to get all we can from whoever we can, however we can. The world teaches that our purpose is to chase money, houses, clothes, to attend the best institutions, eat the finest meals and drink the best wine. And there is nothing inherently wrong with nice things. I must confess, I like nice things. But if we are not careful, we will find ourselves consumed by consumerism. Instead of being focused on going after the, the riches of this world, we must be guided by our purpose. See, God desires that we pursue justice and love. God desires that we treat all of God's people with care and with love. God desires that we all enjoy the fruit of creation, but we must be certain that it's the right fruit and not rotten fruit. There's danger to not being guided by purpose. If you want to see mean, miserable, miserly people, look at somebody who's not living with their purpose. If you want to see depressed, distressed, and downhearted people, look, look at somebody who's not living with their purpose. If you want to see somebody who is a bully and belligerent, look at somebody who's not living into their purpose. But if you want to see someone living a fulfilled and joy-filled life, find someone who has tapped into their purpose. If you want to be around people who are wise and justice-minded, find Christians who are living out their purpose. Purpose comes from God, and purpose gives you a reason to live well. Purpose delivers you from being petty. Purpose energizes all that you do. Purpose elevates. Purpose satisfies. Purpose guides, and purpose uplifts. And that brings me to my third point. If we're going to rise and live into the promise that God has for us, then we must be grounded in prayer, guided by purpose, and finally guarded by God's power. The author says that God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and that all things are under Christ's feet. But if we could be honest with each other, it's difficult for us to believe that all things are under Christ's feet. I mean, we, we look around the world and we see so much brokenness and pain and it often feels like evil reigns. We read the paper and we watch the news and we see story after story of people mistreating their sisters and brothers. Right now in our nation, we are still reeling from the insurrection that took place at the Capitol, where some argued that they must take their country back from others. We see names like Sandra Bland or Breonna Taylor or George Floyd or Elijah McCain, black folks who couldn't drive their car, sleep in their house or walk down the street. We see stories of children still being separated from their parents after being removed from their care at the border. We find that billionaires have increased their wealth by $40 billion while millions of people struggle to pay their rent and stand in line at food distribution places. There is so much hurt and pain around us. How can we really believe that Christ has all power under his feet? How can we really believe that God is going to triumph. 
I'm reminded of one of the most notable former slaves in American history. Many of you know about Harriet Tubman. She was the most prominent conductor on the Underground Railroad, and she later became a spy for the Union Army. A lesser known fact is that when Harriet Tubman was about 12 years old, she got in the middle of an altercation between another slave and an overseer. Harriet was hit in the head when the overseer threw an iron weight at the other slave. And Harriet Tubman lost consciousness and fell to the ground. And from then on, she was plagued with excruciating headaches and unpredictable fainting spells. From the time she was 12 years old, Harriet Tubman didn't know when, where, or how long she would be unconscious. And without knowing when, where, and for how long, she would be unconscious, she still found the strength to rise up and pursue her freedom. But Harriet Tubman didn't stop there because living on purpose does not just involve ourselves. Living on purpose means that we reach back and help somebody else, that we reach out and help our neighbor in need. And so Harriet Tubman returned to the South numerous times in order to help free other enslaved Americans. And here's the thing, even though she didn't know when, where, or for how long she would be unconscious, the rumor says that she never, never, ever, ever lost a passenger. And here's the thing, someone would ask her, Harriet Tubman, how did you find the courage to go back down south even though you didn't know when, where, or for how long you would be unconscious? And I can hear Harriet Tubman saying, because as long as I was doing that work, I was was working for God, and as long as I was working for God, I could trust that God was working for me. And sisters and brothers, I just want to tell somebody that you might have some difficulties in your life. You might have some challenges that you can't see your way out of. You might have some times where you get knocked down. You might fight some battles that it looks like you're going to lose. But as long as we're working for God, we can trust that God is working for us. And and so today, I dare you to rise up. Andrew Day said, rise up, rise like the waves. Rise up, rise unafraid. Rise up in spite of the ache. I know the world looks bleak. I know that sometimes it's dark. Sometimes there are clouds overhead. But God is working for us. Will you rise up today? You don't have to rely just on the past. But right now, here today, our efforts, our work is created creating a better future for somebody else. So rise up. God has put something inside of you and God is telling you to rise so that we can sit in heavenly places, not just when we die, but right here on earth. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for the reminder that we can rise and be with Christ right here today, that if we remain grounded in prayer, that if we are guided by purpose, and that if we are guarded in your power, that God, we can rise and overcome anything that's in our way. We thank you for that reminder today. And God, as we rise, we'll be mindful not to take the credit for ourselves, but to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now is the time in our worship where we respond to God's generosity to us by giving a small portion back to God and the ministry of Christ's Holy Church. If you are prepared to give today, there are three ways that you can give. You can mail a check to our church at 1500 Plainfield Ave, South Plainfield, New Jersey, 07080. You can give online at wumcsp.org give, or you can give through the Tithely app. On behalf of Wesley Church, I want to thank you so much for your gifts. Because of your faithfulness, we can continue to be God's hands and feet to our hurting community and world. Please join me in the offering prayer. Holy breath of life, through the offering of our gifts, we strive to live out our high calling, to be kingdom builders, stepping out in faith to bring transformation. Bless these gifts and those who receive them, that through God's Holy Spirit, courage might embolden us all. Amen. God. 
God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because He lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy He gives. But greater still, the calm assurance This child can face uncertain days Because he lives, because he lives I can face tomorrow, because he lives All fear is gone, because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living Just because he lives I'll cross that river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns Because he lives, I can face tomorrow Because he lives, all fear is gone Because I know he holds the future And life is worth the living just because he lives Because he lives we could face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and life is worth the living just because he lives and life is worth the living just because he lives Wesley South Plainfield, it's been a great honor again to be with you today. And now receive this blessing. Go forward, rising above every obstacle that comes your way. Grounded in prayer, guided by purpose, and guarded in God's power. Be at peace. Amen. Amen.